Arky, what quick hitter are you taking a look at tonight? Going to go to college basketball where, oh, yeah, a team we haven't talked about at all this season uh, is a team that was just undefeated until uh, about a week ago. When Colorado State, uh, as a five-and-a-half-point favorite, takes on Utah State, these two Mountain West uh, opponents will battle it out for conference supremacy. And so a lot of people were shocked that Colorado State started the season undefeated. And granted, they had games like against Alabama that were canceled because of COVID reasons. But mm -hmm. they were a team that was in the Final Four of the NIT last season. They're also a team that was returning all five starters this season. So to, to see that they were good and that they were a good offense should have been too surprising. Now, they're going up against another good offense tonight in Utah State. And I kind of lean toward Utah State when I was first sort of doing the breakdown of this game. But then I saw this morning, just before we went on the air, that Brock Miller is going to be out for Utah State. And I know that's not a game-changing name for anybody, but that's a kid who averages about 10 points a game uh, for Utah State. And when you're averaging 78 points a game, every little bit means something. I don't think you can just redistribute the funds, so to speak. So I think that hurts me as well. Colorado State's undefeated uh, at home. Again, they had just coming off their first loss of the season and it was a heartbreaker uh a heartbreaker as in like they got their butt whipped uh by san diego state in their last game but i'll say this for colorado state i think they're chomping at the bit to come back and i think it's also a little interesting to watch utah state who for the first time kayla since 1992 they're opening their conference play with three straight road games now, that's because of a, of a, of a COVID issue in a, in a game that was uh, postponed uh, last week. But for the first time in tw uh, 30 years, three straight games will be on the road in conference play to start the, to, to start the uh, conference schedule. Wow. And that means they haven't been at home since December the 21st. And I think that sort of wears on you a little bit. I know they want to play. I know they're a high-paced offense and they can get after it. But if I'm leaning somewhere right now, I gotta go with Colorado State and the Rams just a little bit. Minus five and a half is a fairly tall ask, but I think it's doable tonight. So Colorado State against another high paced and pretty good team too in Utah State. Give me the Rams minus five and a half tonight. All righty. By the way, I I enjoy how you say years. Oh, nineteen hundred and ninety two. I was like, wait, nineteen ninety two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just double checking. All right. I'm looking to the NBA. The Nets, who are 25 and 14, 14 and 4 on the road, visit the Chicago Bulls, who are 27 and 11, 15 and 4 at home. Right now, Chicago is the two point favorite with a total sitting at 233 and a half. The new number one team in the East, the Bulls, taking on the number two team, the Nets. My, how things have changed. This will mark the third time these two have met this season. And you know what? The Bulls have won the last two on the road, or sorry, one on the road, one at home. The first game took place back on November 8th, where Chicago got a big win over the Nets, 118-95, and most recently on December 4th in a close game, 111-107. In that game, Zach Levine scored a team high of 31 points, a game in which the Nets were favored by 2.5. KD was leading score for the Nets, finishing with 28. The combined score was 218, falling just short of the 220 total. <clears throat> 222 total, sorry. Uh, so can the Nets get it done tonight over a team that has had their uh, name all season? I'm hoping so for the sake of my bets here. Uh, the Bulls are 18-7 and seven in conference play while the Nets are 18-8. and eight. The Bulls have been playing better basketball as of late. It's just that simple. In their last 10, Chicago is 9-1, and one, averaging 119 a game and shooting 50.9% from the field. The Nets, on the other hand, are 4-6 and six over their last four, or sorry, over the last 10, putting up around 112 uh, a game and shooting 47.2%. The Bulls will, however, be without Patrick Williams, Tyler Cook, Javante Green, and Alex Caruso. The Nets, as of now, have James Harden, LaMarcus Aldridge, and Kyrie Irving all listed as day-to-day, -day, while Joe Harris <clears throat> is out with that ankle injury. Excuse me. <clears throat> Luckily for the Nets, their leading scorer in Kevin Durant will be playing, who leads the team in points at 29.8, while Harden carries the Nets in rebounds and assists. Katie <clears throat> will be going up against DeMar DeRozan, who averages 26.2 for the Bulls, while Vucevic leads and rebounds, and Lonzo Ball leads in assists. And speaking of Ball, he is also the team's leading three-point scorer, averaging around 3.2 a game. And for what it's worth, Patty Mills leads in threes for Brooklyn. Chicago is 23-15 and against the spread this season and are 18-8 and when playing as a two-point favorite. The Nets are 14-23 and 
against the spread so far this year and are three and one when going in as the two point dogs. Both teams have hit the over in 18 of their games so far this season. So what does this all tell us? I can really see this one going either way, and hopefully it will be close. Uh, I just don't know if I can see the Nets really dropping three straight to Chicago. But they are a really good team who plays well at home. But you know what? The Nets also play great on the road. So for the sake of mixing it up, I'm going to be taking the Nets here at plus two tonight from the United Center. You know, And holding my breath. We've had success with betting the Nets on the road uh, against the spread because they're so much better uh, against the spread uh, on the road than they are uh, at home, which is just kind of bizarre and, and, and uh, weird, obviously. Um, <laughs> and even though like we got it to push against Indiana uh, last week, we don't technically get the win overall because right. uh, it closed, I think, at 8.5, so technically it didn't cover or even push. But I'll tell you this, and this is going to be a nice thing to say. The Chicago Bulls did exactly what I said was going to happen last night. Do you remember on this show when I was talking about the DeMar DeRozan being able to go under 25 and a half and what would probably happen or had a good chance of happening? Yes. And that took and it the did. Bulls. If the Bulls win by 50? Yes. They won by 46 last night. So I'm just I'm just saying like y- your boy seems to know something every now and then um that the The Pistons were uh, the Detroit not-so-bad boys, and uh, Chicago (laughs) did uh, really, really well. I think Kyrie Irving, by the way, will be upgraded. I think he'll play tonight, so I think that'll be a good chance for uh, you to be able to cover that bet, too. Hoping so. Hoping he's in this one. 